Hey guys, MC Stew 2001 here, um, STO. I just wanted to go over a uh, new ground build, um, or not new, but uh, it's been progressing uh, over time. I think it's pretty good, and uh, I just wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, if anyone had suggestions for me or could take something from it and putting theirs together, uh, I'm sure everyone's obviously aware by now with the new random queue system, you're getting a lot more ground than you normally would have. And with the Endeavor, uh, personal Endeavor system, uh, we're seeing a lot more ground uh, to meet those daily requirements. So um, I did a budget build one uh, a while back. Um, I'll probably redo that. Um, I'm not, you know, a professional YouTube video maker or anything like that. So I'm just recording these and throwing it out there and hoping it's helpful or uh, can get some advice from uh, someone that may know more or found something else that works better. So <clears throat> I'll just jump into what I got going here. I'll go through the pieces first. Um, so I'm using a uh, kit module. Um, this is from the, what's this from? This is from the Dilithium store. Um, so you'll have to have your specialization um, skill points filled out enough. Uh, you can get um, common quality all the way up to uh, very rare quality and that just depends on how many you have filled. Um, so this sucks everybody in um, and then blows up uh, putting damage on them. Uh, I normally will use this and then I will pop this one here. This is from the winter event um, and it uh, basically uh, brings their, um, it gives them some damage. It also uh, brings down their damage resistance rating for a certain amount of time as well. Um, so these two are optional. I just, I like that. It's kind of gravity well with a, uh, you know, vortex in there, if you will. Um, it's not the exact same thing, but it's like that. Pulls it together and then puts some, some damage and uh, debuffs on them. I'm using the uh, strategist. Uh, I need to finish upgrading these too. Uh, battle strategist, uh, and this boosts your, um, your damage uh, by quite a bit, uh, bonus damage as well. Um, I'll fire all these off here because um, I'm pretty proud of uh, the stats here I'm able to get uh, while, uh, while doing that. Um, and then the two that I covered in the previous video, it is the um, trajectory bending. So this gives you additional critical severity and then it also makes all of your shots for 10 seconds um, flanking shots, uh, which is additional damage. Um, and then the next one is Deadly Intent, and the main reason I'm using this one is it uh, helps with the secondary fire mode on your, uh, your weapon, um, which is nice. So it brings those cooldowns uh, you know, way down, and uh, depending on the weapon you're using, um, that, that can be pretty helpful. I guess that could be somewhat optional, although um, I find at least the big low by cannon I uh, generally use, it it's, works real well. Uh, so I'm using the uh, Imperial Ro Romulan Imperial Naval Set, uh, just like in the previous video. I think most people, this is pretty standard here uh, for the crit chance and crit severity. I am not using it in a set with the body armor. Uh, when you use it in the set with the body armor and you kneel, you get, I believe it's 30%, 25 or 30%. Um, critical severity. Instead of doing that, I went with the fleet armor. Um, this is the advanced fleet recoil compensating armor. You can get it from the star base. It's inexpensive and it gives you 80% critical severity and you don't have to be kneeling. You just get it as a passive bonus there. Uh, using the Nakul two-piece set, I'm pretty sure everyone's probably familiar with that and that's 2% uh, critical chance and I think 30% critical severity. And then I'm using this, the low by cannon. I can't ever pronounce it right, so I'm not going to try. Um, I also got on sale the day before yesterday at 50% off in the uh, Lobby store. So I picked up this uh, Type 2 phaser. And it's got quite a bit of uh, stuff it can do here. And I'm liking it so far. The rate of fire is faster. Um, sometimes I feel like when I'm using the, uh, the cannon here, I feel like my guy's standing around sometimes, not really doing anything, like he's not targeting. And I think what's happening is... When you're with a group of people, uh, things are dying, and they're dying fast enough to where you don't have time for this to start going off sometimes, and so it's finding a new target, and then it's waiting again. Um, so sometimes I just feel like it's it's not firing. And when I started using this the other day, and some of my other weapons, uh, I find it's just picking up targets and it's firing right away. Um, so I don't think it's any kind of glitch. I think it just has to do with the firing cycle uh, of the weapons. but. Um, you know, if you got some range, you're in like one of the battle zones or something like that, this cannon just mows people down. Um, so again, so in the cool sets and then these, um, I generally will use the gambling device. I'll normally use it and then I'll, I'll get rid of it and put something else in because the buff will stay. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and fire that off now. 
and see if we get a win here. Oh, wait. I can't do it from there. All right. And it looks like we got a win. So prior to doing that, I should have went over that first. So one of the things I'm proud of here is the critical chance without the gambling device activated. I'm at 15% and I'm at, uh, what is it? Just over 200 with, uh, let me see, what does that give you? Okay, 10. So I get 20. Okay, so I'm at 205 without the gambling device or 207. Um, which is pretty good. Prior to that, I just picked up a trait, and I'll go into this in a minute, but it gives me an extra 10 or 15% critical severity. Um, so, you know, without using the gambling device or this other trait that I'm using, and I have, I got two points worth uh, from doing the daily endeavors as well. Um, but if I refer you back over to that other video, I'll put a link up. Uh, you can get basically about 15%, 13 to 15% critical severity, and uh, somewhere around 180 critical chance and that's with no low buy, nothing special, just basically this build here in terms of uh, the kit, armor, and a cool set, and the, um, the, the two-piece of the weapon, and then some standard traits that just come, you know, everybody's got them. So if you uh, slot all of the, uh, the ones that buff your, uh, your damage, your crit severity, that kind of thing, um, you'll be able to get those kinds of numbers um, without doing anything special. Most of it is mission run-through, except for... Um, the uh, fleet armor, which is inexpensive. I mean, it, it's real, real cheap. So you can put together a good ground build real fast for basically next to nothing. Um, you guys are probably most uh, familiar with these. I'm just going to highlight them and you can check them out yourself. But um, you know, you use different combos for different things. Hive mind for team stuff. Some of these are you know stock things that will come with your um, your character just at default. And we'll get to the end one here, and I'll talk about that just for a second. So nothing super complicated, but Terran Vision, there is a uh, ship kind of version of this as well. Basically, uh, you're getting plus 15% critical severity, and um, it will if you get critically hit, it slows you down by 10% in your movement, uh, which for me doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I mean, if you're in the middle of a fight, I mean, you're not really going anywhere, especially using this large cannon that I normally use. When you have that thing out and you're aiming, you're not moving fast anyway. So to me, that's really a non-issue, and you're getting the extra 15% critical severity, which is huge. Um, on the reputation stuff, this is all pretty standard here as well, and I'll just highlight it out. You can check it out. Um, so I do have tier six on all the re um, reputation stuff, so all of these bonuses are going to be a little bit higher um, than if you're not there. So pretty straightforward. Um, skill tree wise, my skill tree could use some work. I, uh, you know, I I've been playing this game about a year now, and I've done a deep dive, and um, you know, I'm fairly knowledgeable. But you know, this game's so big and vast. I mean, uh, it's hard to you know think that anyone can know you know even the majority of it but in any case this needs to be redone i'm going to focus more on the kit side of it um, because i'm using a lot of kit stuff to buff um you know my attacks when uh you know when i'm when i'm playing here on ground um and you know probably change some of this weapon so i'm not exactly sure everything i'm going to do but i'm definitely going to max this out here and i'm going to rearrange basically you know these other three um, and put things in different places. So, you know, I am not making a recommendation to you on this. I mean, I'm not having any kind of big problems or anything like that, but I think I can get a lot more out of it uh, given what I know now compared to a couple months ago when I had re-rolled this last time. So, uh, sorry, this part isn't real helpful. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm not saying that it's good. So, um, you know, if you're going to copy that, uh, then, you know, that, that's up to you, but I'm not saying do it, just so we're clear. Um, okay, what else? Um, so it kind of sucks because so I, I normally, with the way I run things, I run it with the temporal and I run it with uh, the, the strategist. Um, and that's mainly for space. Um, the problem is when you're doing randoms, you can't, you know, once you get in queued into the, the match, you can't change this, which is kind of a bummer because I have gone and, and got this all done. But unless you're selecting a ground match, which most people don't do. Now, if I go when I'm doing the Endeavor, I'll switch it over. Um, 
you know, so if I'm intending on doing it, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll switch this, but th that's kind of a bummer. I, I wish during that little cooldown before the match starts, it would let you change this around. And if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. I, I, I'm almost hundred percent sure that's not the case. I know I tried it uh, not too long ago and I was unable to change that. So it'd be nice if, you know, you get queued up and you, you know, you get dropped in the game and you got your 30 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever, before it starts, if you could switch this around some, that would, that make it a lot nicer. Because uh, if I get dropped in the ground, I would like to take advantage of the commando stuff that I've, I've filled in. So, but that would be my preferable. Um, you know, if I knew I was going in the ground, I would switch that over. And I would also, um, I'd still leave the uh, temporal. <clears throat> I don't know all the ins and outs on this, but I know with um, some of the kits that I'm using, modules and that kind of thing, you know, this helps that. There may be a better setup for it, but. Um, uh, from what I understand, you know, if it's damage over time, things like that, um, uh, the bomb that I'm using that sucks everybody in, Praxton bomb, um, I know this helps that, um, and I'm sorry, but I can't tell you exactly why. <laughs> uh, and maybe I'm wrong, and if I am, let me know. Um, okay, so back over here, and this ain't gonna last long, but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit all of my, um, Keybinds basically get everything you know all juiced up, and then we'll look at what that does. <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, to my specs here, um, particularly in the uh, critical chance and critical severity categories here. And we'll also look at the damage and DPS of the uh, the weapon. So this is going to happen fast. I'm going to screenshot it, and then what I'll do is I'll 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 edit it into the video somehow or do a little overlay um, and and go over that real quick. I mean, it's going to be pretty straightforward, basically. Critical severity is going to get well over 300, which is crazy. I mean, if I get these kind of numbers on my ships, I mean, it would be insane. And I'm getting somewhere in the mid-30s on critical chance. Um, this weapon, I'm getting well over 1,000. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was last time. Somewhere around 1,200, 1,300 uh, disruptor damage. And in the 400 to 500 range, I want to say DPS. Um, which is, I mean, just huge, huge numbers there. Um, so, you know, if you click all your buttons, you know, going up against the guy at the end, or you just got a, you know, a bunch of bad guys around, I mean, you're going to just toast people just left and right while, while this is lasting. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll kind of spread it out. So I'll use one and, you know, that's going down. I'll start to use another and, you know, and then I'll kind of save it up for a minute before I get to, you know, the boss at the end. And that's where, you know, we click everything kind of a thing. Um, so on... I am using some key binds as well. I'm using them off of my tab key. And um, I have it to, <laughs> I don't know why this thing's here. Let's get rid of that. I was wondering why that was popping up when I was doing these tests earlier. Um, so I have the uh, targeting optics, um, which is another captain's ability for ground. Um, I have the deadly intent and trajectory bending. Um, they have pretty short cooldowns. Uh, I want to say, what are they? They're around like 20 seconds or so, something like that. Uh, this one's a little bit longer, but um, I, I want to keep these running as much as possible. Rearranging my skill tree on the kit, uh, performance and readiness will help those cooldowns as well. Um, so that, that'll be uh, you know nice. And I think on my traits, I'm, I think I switched one of them out, yeah, for this. So I may rearrange this as well, because I have... Uh, Okay, kit readiness, but kit performance is not uh, in there. Um, but in any case, so I'm using uh, my tab key, and that fires these three off. That's uh, how I'm working that. All right, uh, so let's do this, and we can get a look at that. All right, so we're going to be paying attention to the critical severity and uh, critical chance, and then the weapon here. So let's do that. All right, so we're gonna. All right, so we're getting 1529 disruptor damage, 470 on the DPS, 32.7 critical chance, and that was like 380 on uh, critical severity. Um, so that lasts for about five seconds, and then you'll see them start kind of dropping off, and it's working its way back down to uh, where it sits when it's idle. Um, if you're in a match with other people that have hive mind, uh, some of these numbers would be higher, your damage numbers. Um, so you can get a little bit more out of it. There's other traits and things like that. Um, I wouldn't consider them a glass cannon. I mean, I don't find myself dying too much, especially if I'm paying attention using my heals. 
Um, you know, so my my health rating I think is pretty decent. I saw a guy I saw a guy the other day. He was at like 1500. I mean, I don't even know how he did that. Uh, the shield could be better. Some of that is on some, one of my other characters. I have uh, the same shield and weapon you know set I'm using, and I got that on Epic, and it's quite a bit more. Uh, I'm getting somewhere around I want to say 800 with that. Um, so some additional upgrading on this. Uh, and on this um, would you know buff that even more but again I'm not finding that you know I'm dying a whole lot um, playing on um, on elite and then uh, what's the other one I've I'll normally I play with some people on a regular basis and we'll do uh, uh, okay so not elite advanced is generally what we're running stuff at for the rewards and then uh, elite uh, I have some teammates that you know we'll, we'll go and play uh, together and, and they know what they're doing you know and we're doing these runs and and so do I and um, so even on those, I don't find that, you know, I'm dying, you know, more than I should be essentially on there or at all. Um, so anyways, that's, uh, that's my ground build, uh, starting off, uh, 2019. Um, I hope that's helpful. If anybody has suggestions for me, you know, I think damage wise, I'm probably pretty good. I think most of the time I'm getting anywhere between 300 to five, 600 on a good day DPS. I do see people doing seven, eight, and nine, um, I don't know what they're doing um and you know there, there's a lot more to this game you know that i haven't discovered where you know dps is like everyone wants to do that and that's the route i was going you know with with most of my builds ship wise um but you know if you can really work out special you know call them little recipes you know people put together for themselves um because there's so many overlaying factors that have so many variations i mean you can really make you know things that are unique in terms of your overall abilities and stuff um, so I'll see people, you know, doing just amazing numbers and it's not because, you know, they have some massive glass cannon that, you know, just does tons of, you know, DPS. There's other factors in there and, you know, I'd like to, you know, be learning a little bit more about, you know, kind of that deeper stuff there. But, um, so if anyone has any suggestions, um, on this build or anything else or questions for me, uh, leave a uh, comment. Uh, if this video is helpful, um, subscribe and, uh, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. It helps me out here. Uh, thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.